In this lecture presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to be returning to rectilinear motion and restudying it with our newfound knowledge of integrals. Now, I wrote down the derivative table that we had before. If you have the position of an object or a particle or a cat that's given by the function s of t, then the velocity is going to equal the derivative of the position over the change in time, which makes sense. Change in position over change in time is velocity. Derivative of velocity with respect to time is going to be the acceleration. Change in velocity over change in time is acceleration. Now we're going to expand our knowledge using integrals. Our velocity with respect to time is going to equal the integral of our acceleration with respect to time which makes absolute perfect sense seeing as the integral is the antiderivative. So let's integrate this. Uh, the integral of negative 10 dt is going to equal negative 10t plus c. Don't forget your integration constant. Now your position with respect to time is going to equal your integral of your velocity with respect to time. which in our situation is going to be the integral of negative 10 t plus c dt which equals negative 5 t squared plus c t plus d. Now I want to bring you back to the little diagram that I drew when we did the first rectilinear motion lecture. We had a person standing on a platform 20 feet high throwing a ball up into the air at 10 meters per second under the force of gravity which is approximately equal to negative 10 meters per second. For those of you who are pricklers it's 9.81 or 9.79 if you're in Dallas, Texas. The equation we had for this was s of t equals 20 plus 10t minus 5t squared. And I would like to point out to you that uh, negative 5t squared is in our equation. Our 10t is our ct and our 20 is our d. So we get the exact same equation back out as we put back in which is exactly what we wanted considering integrals are the reverse of derivatives. Now let's uh, figure something else out. If you have a ball at x equals 0 and it's moving at the rate of 10 meters per second, how far is that ball going to be at time equals 17? Why not? V of t equals 10 meters per second. Our position is the integral of our velocity. So 10 dt integrated from time equals 0 to time equals 17. This equals 10t 0 to 17 which equals 170. Which makes perfect logical sense by inspection. If something's moving 10 meters per second over 17 seconds it's going to equal 100. It's going to have traveled 170 meters. But we can go a little bit further with this. Let's say that this is under acceleration as well, so it's traveling 10 meters per second plus an additional 5 meters per second each second. So our, our initial velocity is 10 meters per second and we're adding 5 meters per second each second. And it's starting at x equals 0, time equals 0, and we're going to go through time 10 because I don't want to do any difficult calculations in my head. This is the exact same problem, it's a little bit more complicated, but one way or the other you integrate your velocity with respect to time to get the position. I'll actually write that out here. So 10 plus 5t 
dt between 0 and 10. That's going to equal 10t plus 2.5t squared between 0 and 10, which will equal 100 plus 2.5 times 100. This, of course, is this 100 is 10 times 10, of course. And all told, that's going to be 350 meters. So you integrate your acceleration to get your velocity. You integrate your velocity to get your position. Derivative of position equals velocity. Derivative of velocity equals acceleration. That is rectilinear motion.